welcome to British Amps. Thanks for joining us. Today we're going to be talking about prepping test tubes for the nuptial flight season. Stick around and if you're not already subscribed, smack that subscribe button. And the reason we wash our hands, which is the, one of the most fundamental things in uh, this process, um, is because you're transferring any bacteria from your hands and your nails to that cotton wool. Um, and if you don't clean your hands, then all the bacteria and the nasties on your hands will turn that cotton um, black. Some call it mold, but it's not. It's just, uh, it's just bacteria forming. Um, the ants will naturally turn that dark, but they shouldn't be doing that for a couple of months. Um, but if you haven't washed your hands beforehand, then you're going to have to be changing these tubes over every two weeks. And I can tell you if you've caught 20 or 30 of these, you do not want to be doing that every three weeks. So just by washing your hands and making sure that your cotton is kept in a nice, secure, clean place, uh, this will make the process much easier. Um, I don't want to teach you how to suck eggs, but I'll go through the basics of what we do. Uh, we have two test tubes. Uh, this is a standard, what we call the standard industry size, which is 100 millimetres by 16 millimetre out, uh, out of dimension. So that's that bit. And then we've got the larger ones that we do for larger colonies, which are 150 millimetre, again by 16 millimetre out of dimension. Uh, and these fit our adapters which in turn will fit uh, all the formicariums that we sell. So um, that's a, a good point to go. You can get smaller ones and you can get vials, um, but we found that these are fine. If you're catching species like Lassius niger, this is perfectly acceptable. Uh, you've got to bear in mind that for every one of these queens you catch, um, during her lifetime to the point where she's got a colony of about 20 or 30 workers, you're going to be changing her test tube three times. Now there are some fundamentals uh, which is quite important um, when packing these, that the uh, area of the water doesn't want to be too large in proportion to the overall tube. And the reason for this is, uh, mainly it's for uh, our point of view, when we're posting these, the pressures change. So if it goes cold overnight, these will expand and contract. So um, say if I was sending this by airmail to Spain, for instance, if I had a large water area in there, it would potentially explode. Um, and it sounds quite dramatic, it's not like an explosion, but it's what it will do is force that cotton out, um, which you don't want. Now, some people would say that you can pack more cotton in, but then if you pack more cotton in, you've then got the other problem. So it's also important that your cotton um, is also not too thick and too tightly packed, because if you pack that cotton too tight, the water can't pass through the test tube. And, and the whole point in doing this is to make this chamber damp. So that's a really key point. You don't want really any more than, than about what we've got there. To show you, I basically got three marbles um, and that is what we're looking for when you're pinching let's put those down they're gonna roll away so when you're pinching your cotton it should feel as tight as that marble and that's a, um, a standard marble that you'd have played with as a child um, before the advent of computer games so here we've got our test tube 100 mil by 16 millimeter after I mentioned uh, we've got a little here that makes life a bit easier just to dispense a bit of water we've overfilled that which is perfect and then we're taking our cotton and what we're doing is just folding that over and we fold it that way so that all the loose ends are on that side 
and it should feel to the touch as tight as that. Uh, and then we plonk that in the top, like so. And then this is another important part is this, the tamper or whatever you use, <clears throat> needs to be flat. So if you use a pencil, is what you're actually going to do is drag all these fibers out. I don't know if you can see them here, but these fibers will get caught around the queen's legs. Might not look much to you and I, but that could actually be quite devastating. So, and then with a nice decisive stroke, he says, I'll just put that down and all the water come out of that. I need to top that up. Start again. So again, fold it over. And with a nice decisive stroke. And then just tamper down all those loose contacts. And then if we flick away the excess, we shouldn't have any air bubbles in here. Uh, and the reason we move, um, we want to avoid air bubbles is because if there's air in here, the air will be in contact with the cotton. And if the air is in contact with the cotton, uh, invariably means that the water is not. So again, it, it kind of beats the point. Uh, where you've got test tubes that are damp like this, where you've just prepped them, uh, we always have a bit of handy kitchen wipe. And just fold that over. And this is quite important if you're doing very small species like the Fiodol. It's just to remove the excess moisture because you can actually get caught in the suspension of the water. So there we are, perfect. Apart from a crack in the uh, test tube there. Not that that's significant, that will be fine. But um, that's what we're trying to, to look for. So we've got a, no water bubbles in there. Uh, it's not uncommon when you're doing these to get the odd one or two with air bubbles. But you can just fold that over again. And we're going for that nice feeling of a sturdy marble. I'll do this in slow-mo. And again, flat tamper end. Nice decisive action. Flick off any excess water. And again, we just remove the excess water on the inside of the chamber. So there we are. Uh, it's what I also wouldn't recommend doing is prepping these in advance. Because if you leave these open, um, the air will get in there and it will dry that cotton out. And once that's dried out, it kind of seals that cotton off. Uh, it's fine once you've got the queen in there and you've sealed it off with a lid or a cotton stopper like that, that will be fine. Um, but if you leave that exposed, then you're going to get problems and you'll notice that the queens will start dying. Um, and when connecting, uh, collecting the um, queens from a, a nuptial flight, I would recommend don't take any more than you can look after, really. Um, we're seeing a lot of people collecting stupid amounts, um, which is more than we sell in, a, in, in an entire year. Um, I just don't think it's... Um, A good thing really. Um, by all means do collect some for you, your friends, some to give away and some to sell if you can find a, a place like eBay to sell them. Um, but just bear in mind that we don't sell any more than a hundred of Lassius uh, Niger a year. So if you're collecting those kind of amounts then you just got to bear in mind that you know, you're going to be losing um, 
a lot of time and a lot of money because um, they do take a lot of care and again when these test tubes go over they will need you will need to attach another one um, and transfer them over so there is quite a bit of work in there and uh, realistically um, you don't want to be doing hundreds of those it takes days so um, if you do make a, a mistake with a cotton uh, we use a crochet hook which is not the best thing in the world but it does uh, it does work and you can hoik that down and pull that cotton out um, which is great for reusing these test tubes and also when you're if you're reusing the test tubes which, which we do recommend because they are reusable um, get a brush down there and again use some antibacterial um, washing up liquid uh, give them a good thorough clean out obviously rinse them off um, and you're ready to go again and there we are hope that's helpful and good luck with this season's nuptial flights <laughs>